You've probably never seen this fruit in your life. This isn't a plum and it isn't a pomegranate. It's a plumegranate. And it wasn't just created for you to discover a new flavor. It's one of many new hybrid fruit that are being developed to resist climate change. So this week we harvest pomegranates, watermelon plums, aromacots, blackcot, tiger, violet, apricots. These are a lot of strange names that we haven't necessarily heard of before. Yeah, they may be strange, but they taste wonderful. Welcome to Bendor Nurseries, a small family farm operating in northern Israel that's been here since the late 1800s. Now, this isn't any old farm. These farmers are developing new kinds of fruit that are gonna be able to withstand all kinds of weather conditions to hopefully fight hunger in the future. So this is a watermelon plum, the first watermelon plum in our calendar. This uh, group of workers are special workers. It's all hand-picked. Hand-picked. And only two fingers touches the, the fruit until it reaches the final customer. The watermelon plum has a green, Skin. This specific variety is very, very crunchy. So is there watermelon in this? No, there's no watermelon but in it. It just has the crunch of a watermelon. It's green outside and red inside. This is why it is called it's watermelon. Called wow. Where are they gonna be sold? This specific fruit will be sold uh, to boutique stores, distribution companies, and websites, and some specialized retailers. We have the mango-flavored nectarine, Revital. These are rose water nectarines? Yeah. Okay. It's a family of varieties with the characteristics of, of the taste. A mango nectarine sounds like my dream, and I have to say it tastes just as good as it sounds. But you're not just creating and breeding these fruit for the flavor, right? Flavor is the most important thing in our breeding program, but also uh, resistant to diseases and climate change is just as important. We bred these varieties to be resistant to warm climate, resistant to different diseases, uh, viruses, bacteria, and different stresses. This is no little feat. Global warming has caused almost $100 million in damage to Israeli agriculture in the last year alone, with the hardest hit sector being fruit. And this is a global issue that could change how we eat as we know it. Multiple studies suggest that climate change could wipe out half of the land used to grow coffee around the world by 2050. And if you love chocolate, it may be hard to hear, but if global temperatures rise by just two degrees Celsius, vast swaths of land across Africa where 50% of cocoa is produced around the world will become unsuitable for the crop, meaning your chocolate bar could become a luxury. The bottom line is that as the climate heats up, what we eat is going to have to change because not every crop will survive. Soon, the prices of a lot of produce that we've become used to eating will go up as well. We grow these varieties in 34 different countries at the moment, so different climates from very warm conditions to very cold conditions. The idea is to find the varieties that work best in a specific climate condition. So varieties that withstand frost and very cold events will be more suitable to North European countries. And varieties that withstand the heat stress are planted obviously in warm in the desert. But crossbreeding to produce these innovative fruit isn't as easy as it may seem. It takes time. The breeding process is, is very long in trees, so it takes a lot of time until you see results. Usually around 15 years until we get to commercialize a variety. Today, Bendor Nurseries is cultivating fruit on every single continent, including in countries like the USA, Chile, South Africa, and Spain. Beyond just being tasty and sustainable, they're also extremely healthy. On each carton, on each packaging, we have an explanation. Specifically, this family has a high level of antioxidants, which is five times more than a glass of wine in one plum, three times more than a pomegranate. So for now, you can't reveal to me the next innovative fruit of the future that you're cultivating? Not yet, there are several in the pipeline. All right, it's okay. We're gonna have to settle for the watermelon plum and the pomegranate for now, but I think that's totally fine. I'll take them on.